morning. I hope, pray, you are having a blessed day today. I hope you're not up there in all that cold weather. I hope you're enjoying this day the Lord has made. It's a day that the Lord has made that we could go and rejoice, be glad in it, but we get to go and praise and worship Him. And I hope, pray, that if you're a home driver and you can, go and uh, go to church, go somewhere and worship the Lord. But if you cannot, how about going to a chapel? Find a chapel and go and fellowship with other believers. Go and worship the Lord this morning. Uh, matter of fact, let me just mention, since I mentioned that, about uh, we have an app. If you don't know it, we have an app and it has a map on it. You go to our website, uh, truckstopministries.org. Go to locate a chapel, and we have our uh, locator guide there. Or you can click on the, uh, the other one that says uh, we'll take you to a map. And it's got all the little pins of all of our uh, chapels all over the country. See if you can find one near you and go and worship the Lord and fellowship with other believers. We need to be fellowshipping one with another in these days that we live in. Amen. And I want to share something with you this morning. I hope pray will encourage you. And I hope I hope it will encourage you to really uh, do some soul searching, some thinking, as I have been doing over these last uh, few days. And uh, you know, with all that's going on, of course, we're all wondering what's going on in uh, in our world and globally. If you're uh, if you actually study the Bible, read the Bible much, you know you can't help but think about are we uh, in the last of the last days, which I personally believe we are. I believe it's very, very likely that we could see uh, the things that you read about in Ezekiel, the things you read about in uh, Revelation and all those things. Uh, we could see that happen in my lifetime. And I'm an old guy, so it could happen before I leave this earth. It could happen any moment. But uh, neither here nor there, I want to be serving the Lord whether I got another year or I got another 50 years. I want to be serving the Lord. Amen. So I want to talk to you about... Uh, what is it costing you to serve the Lord? And I'm going to read a scripture over in First uh, Chronicles chapter 21 where King David was talking about that very thing. And, and uh, I'm going to look at some things in Matthew in the New Testament with you in just a moment. But, uh, you know, I, I don't get to play Brad's music much anymore. It's, it just hadn't worked out. Uh, I haven't played it much. But he has a song that uh, he does, and I don't have the copyrights for this song. I'm I don't remember who originally done it right off the top of my head. Uh, it come to me in a minute, but it's called Not For Sale. And uh, before we get started, I want to play this song, and I want to encourage you to listen to the words of this song, Not For Sale. That is my prayer, and uh, I want to live that way. And I want to encourage you to do the same, that you would want to do that and live in such a way that's pleasing to the Lord, and uh, we don't compromise what we believe in our walk with the Lord. We are not for sale. I'm going to play this song for you, and uh, then I'm going to read these scriptures to you, but uh, I want you to listen to these words. But before I play that song, let's just go to the Lord in a word of prayer together and ask Him just to uh, speak to our hearts today. Uh, just really open up our, our minds our, and our ears to listen. As Jesus said in Revelation he that hath an ear, let him hear. So let us have an ear to hear. Amen. So let's go to the Lord and work prayer together. Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you, Lord, again for your goodness and your mercy, for loving us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for giving us these days like today that we can stop and pause all the business, Lord, and uh, come together and fellowship around the things that you've done for us and give testimony and praise and worship to what you've uh, done for us in our lives. Give us eternal life, Father. And I pray today if there's just one driver that might hear my voice, anybody that might hear my voice today, Lord, that uh, if they don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, they don't have a relationship with you, Lord, I pray that you would draw them to you today, save their soul, change their life for all eternity. While I thank you for the drivers that keep America going, Lord, I, I ask you to be with those that are in the convoy, Lord, whether we agree with everything that's going on with the convoy or not, I do pray, Lord, that you keep them safe. I do pray, Lord, that our lawmakers and politicians, Lord, that they would listen to we the people, Lord. We uh, we have a voice. We're the ones who are supposed to be running this country, Lord. That's the way it was set up. And I just ask you to keep them safe, Lord. May everything be done that would bring you honor and glory and be lawful, Lord. I just ask you to watch over everything that happens there, Father. For those of us who may not be in the actual convoy, Lord, may we be supportive and uh <clears throat> And pray for them, Lord. Pray for their safety, Father. I know there's uh, 
quite a few preachers that are involved in it, Lord. And I just pray that you keep them all safe. And I pray, Lord, that they will all truly seek you and your will as they're doing this uh, this convoy, Father. Lord, I ask you to help us, Lord, all of us drivers that uh, want to be used by you, want to be uh, a shining light for you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be mindful every day that we would not be for sale, that we would serve you, Lord, with all that we have because you gave your life that we could have eternal life. May we never get over that. May we never forget that, Father. Watch over those drivers out there today, Lord. Keep them safe on the road. We thank you for them. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all listen to the words. Brother Brad sings this song here called Not For Sale. If I can get him to come on on cue. Amen. Listen to this song. <laughs> to preach so strong what happened to that scene he used to sing that song the preachers out filling their way that scene is now singing country they sing out what is right for what is wrong what happened to that church used to be on fire what happened to all voices who sang in that heavenly choir oh the church is now grown dead and cold the choir is silent cause nobody goes they sold out to the world and their own desire this heart belongs to Jesus Cause he saved my soul from hell This heart belongs to Jesus And this heart Is not for sale Amen Not for sale I'm not for sale Oh, no, sir Well, a man from California called a few months ago he said, go with your talent, and we could make a lot of gold. I said, thanks for the offer. It all sounds good. But I belong to Jesus, and I'm just not for sale. Amen. That could be a prayer. Not for sale. Not for sale. I'm not for sale. No, no, well, if you're living for Jesus, friend, there'll come a day that old devil's gonna try to get you some way. He'll try you and tempt you with his eyes straight from hell. Just hold to Jesus and never I'm not to say. Not to say. Not to say. I'm not to say. No, no, no. I belong to the Lamb of God. Yes, he purchased me with his precious blood. I don't need popularity. I never have what he gave to me. I belong to the King of Kings. He's my hope, he's my joy, he's my everything. I belong to the Lord God Almighty. I belong to the one who gave his life for me. I belong to the Lamb of God. He purchased me with his precious blood. I don't need popularity. I better have what he gave to me. Some are so conviction for compromise. Some are so the truth for a pack of lies. Some are so testimonies for fortune and fame. I just want to glorify and magnify his name. I belong to Jesus, cause he saved my soul from hell. This heart belongs to Jesus, and this heart, this heart, is not for sale, not for sale, not for sale. I'm not for sale, no, 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 no
Amen. I hope pray that that is your prayer. Amen. I am not for sale. Hallelujah. Let me get me back on here. I uh, I hope and pray that you uh, listen to the words of that song. It was Michael Combs that originally done that song. I thought about it. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't think I'd ever heard it until I heard Brother Brad singing. I thought, wow, it's been many years ago. We've done a revival together. And uh, I just, man, I thought that's a fantastic song. And I want to live that way. And I, I fail. I don't uh, always do exactly the way that I want to do in serving the Lord. And I'm sure we all have our, our times that we don't do exactly like we want. But think about all the people that have been, uh, you know, claimed the name of Christ. They've served the Lord. They've done all these wonderful things. But then as the song talks about, they go in a different direction because maybe it costs a little too much. And that's what I want to talk to you about, driver. What does it cost you to serve the Lord? What has it cost you to serve the Lord? I want to read a passage of Scripture. I, I just read this the other day, and uh, it just really been on my heart and my mind. And uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 21, if you're driving down the road, keep driving down the road, <laughs> amen. But if you need to, uh, looking out the window. Uh, but if you need to talk to somebody, you want to talk to somebody, maybe something I might say, uh, call our prayer line 1-800-248-8662. Uh, we want to be there for you, driver. And uh, uh, I, I just hope and pray that you realize how much we do care about truck drivers. Amen. And I also want to mention, I hope and pray you all come see us there in uh, Louisville at the uh, Mass Truck Show. I don't remember our booth number, but we got a booth there. And, uh, hope, hopefully you can come see us there at the Louisville, Kentucky. Well, let me read you what David said here, and I won't go into uh, all of this, but David has committed a sin and, uh, and numbering the people. And and uh, so David has to, uh, you know, he chooses his punishment, all those things. But after repentance and everything, David is getting right with God, and he is going to give a sacrifice to the Lord. So he goes to this man, Ornan, and uh, who is uh, threshing wheat, and he wants to uh, to to put up an altar there, a sacrifice to the Lord, and he wants to buy the place, and he wants to use it. So Ornan says, you know, take it today. This is First Chronicles chapter 21, and he says, you take it and uh, let the Lord, the king, to do with it what you want, and uh, uh, it's yours. And David says these words after that. <clears throat> Uh, after he tells him he can have it, do what he wants with it, King David tells him in verse 24, he says unto Ornan, he said, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price, for I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. And that's the thing as I was reading this chapter that really stuck out to me. He said, I will not offer an offering, a burnt offering unto the Lord without cost. So David gave to Ornan for the place 600 shekels of gold by weight. And, and you know, that's a shekel nowadays is probably, I don't know, I, I'm just from things I've studied in the past, with our inflation, all that's going on, it's probably $20 what a shekel would be worth now, $20, $25. So you're talking a lot of money, amen? And uh, so think about David gave that much money. He wanted to give what it was worth, and he didn't want to skimp. So I want you to have this thought in mind. What has it costing you to serve the Lord? And as I was meditating on that and I was reading, and then I got to, I just kept thinking about it, kept thinking about it. So uh, I went over to uh, Matthew and I read this verse that, that we all know. And, uh, and I've read it many, many times. I've quoted it. I've mentioned it. Uh, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24 uh, we we know this verse and we know what it says and we mention it often and it's in several places. Uh, this is where he says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And it, it mentions it in Mark chapter 8, uh, to deny yourself, take up the cross. Mark chapter 10, uh, you have treasure in heaven, take up the cross, amen. 
uh, Luke 9, take up the cross daily. So as I was reading this, and like many of you, I've read it over and over and over and over. I've read this verse, and I've mentioned it many times. But I just decided, you know, sometimes I just do a little word search and study. I mentioned many times, I don't really speak, uh, I don't speak Greek and Aramaic and Hebrew, and but I can look the words up. I look the words up in the original language, and uh, I use a strong concordance a lot, and uh, and I just read the words and the definitions, and it helps me uh, <clears throat> to understand the point. Even when I know what the word, such as deny, I know what the word deny means. Uh, uh, overall, I know it means I'm going to deny myself, and I'm going to I'm going to put forth my efforts for someone else. Uh, I'm going to deny myself, or as my my wife has been uh, doing this, uh, and I'm supposed to be doing it, this intermittent fasting. And man, it's tough sometimes doing it. You, you deny yourself, and you don't eat. You 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 eat uh, say three or four o'clock in the afternoon, and then you go all the rest of the day and all night, and maybe you don't eat again till twelve, one, three, four. And uh, intermittent fasting it's supposed to be good for you. And I, I know it's another message, but I have studied a lot of that about health benefits of fasting. Uh, I think it's part of God's design, but it's still not easy. Amen. Uh, it uh, It's not easy at all. So you deny yourself and, and you're going to uh, give it all to the Lord. So let me just read you some definitions. I want you to really think about this, driver. If you're not for sale, because I, I tell you, I've been thinking about, as most of you have, no matter what you think about what's going on with this war and Russia, what they're doing and how you think it's prophetically and all those things, the Ukrainian people are denying themselves and they are fighting for what they believe in. And it is costing them. Uh, not only are they're, they're, uh, it's costing them by the way that they're doing different things. I heard of, uh, I'm sure you have too, where the uh, uh, a place where they make beer is making uh, Molotov cocktails, you know, uh, they're mass producing these things so that they can fight back. They had all these bottles there. And so this, this, this is a private company giving up their money, uh, resources and, and doing these things. Uh, there's, uh, all sort of things that, that people have done, all these stories we hear and, uh, and it's costing them something and, uh, they're fighting for their country. They're fighting for what they believe in. So let me ask you this. What is it costing us? We say we believe in Jesus Christ. We trust him as our Lord and Savior. We're followers of Christ. We're disciples of Christ. What is it costing you to serve the Lord? I want you to keep that in mind. As, as this verse says, to deny yourself. It means to, to disown, to abstain. That's why I was talking about the abstaining. You're fasting. You're abstaining from eating. To deny utterly. It means to disown oneself. Have you ever been there? Uh, it, it says to take up, and and the word, the, the, the phrase there, take up, means, of course, to lift or to raise, but it means to raise the voice, raise your voice. What if you raise your voice to uh, <clears throat> to glorify the Lord? What is it going to cost you? Uh, it will cost you if you take a stand for the glory of God. It will cost you if you take a stand. And I just ask you, on your in your daily walk with the Lord, what is it costing you to serve the Lord? Uh, <clears throat> do people that you come in contact week after week, do they know that you're a child of God? Is there anything that shows you to be a fanatic, a fan of Jesus, a peculiar person? Anything showing that in your life? What are you doing for the glory of God? So it's going to cost us. And, and then it says to this word, take up the cross. And the cross, and it literally means a, a stake or a post, a pole, a cross. Uh, it's not jewelry, okay? Uh, it literally means a place of capital punishment. Now, it can be used that way. As a, as a figure of speech, it's, it's exposure to death or self-denial. Now, I want you to think about that. To take up your cross, to die to self, it's going to cost you. Amen? What is it costing us to serve the Lord? Think about what this, this verse is actually saying. This is Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. It says, And let him deny himself and take up his cross and... And we all know what the word and means. 
I even looked to see what the word and means. It says, it's basically saying, so then, because of, uh, because if you're going to follow the Lord and you're going to serve the Lord, you're going to take up the cross, because of this, follow me. Follow him. It means to be going in the, it means to be the same way. It means to be, uh, to accompany. If you're going to follow the Lord, if you're going to serve the Lord, Specifically here, it's talking about, it's used in the context of a disciple, uh, one to follow the Lord. So he goes on to say, if you're going to take up your cross, follow him. And he says, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And, and the word whosoever, we like that word most of the time. I mean, you think about what it says in Romans uh, 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You, whoever, whoever calls the name of the Lord. John 3, 16 is teaching us, whosoever, uh, whosoever believes in Jesus Christ, whosoever, we like that term, anyone can be saved, amen? Anyone can be forgiven of your sins, whatever they are. You just give it to the Lord, whosoever. You are whosoever, amen? All you have to do is give it to the Lord. And so in context of this denying yourself, that means you qualify, you're a whosoever. You can do this. You can be the one that's going to uh, live for the Lord. Anyone can do this. Everyone can do this. But you have to deny yourself. Amen? Deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow Jesus Christ. And so I, I want you to think about <clears throat> whosoever, whosoever can be saved. And I hope and pray you are saved. If you're not, listen, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks you grew up on. It doesn't matter your past. Uh, you can be saved, born again, have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you'll just repent of your sins, turn from your ways, follow him, trust him, that's you. Amen? Whosoever. And whosoever will deny self and follow the Lord, take up the cross and follow. This applies to all of us. And as King David said, it calls to sacrifice to the Lord. So I want to ask you, driver, are, are you a living sacrifice to the Lord? You know, last... Uh, not last week, week before last, I was with a, a missionary driver, uh, Doug McGowan, and uh, and he played the guitar, and I asked him, did, did uh, he know this song? He told me, actually, after it was all over, he had played his guitar in about a year. and uh, <clears throat> But I asked him, did he know that song, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, a living testimony, a living sacrifice, a living sanctuary, be that person. For the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, he Googled it and looked it up, listened to it, and then he played it and we sang it. Amen. And uh, so I was thinking about that as Brad was, I listened to that song, Brad singing Not for Sale, and, and thinking about following the Lord and taking up your cross, being a living sacrifice. <clears throat> are, are we doing that every day? Are we really a peculiar person? Are we different than the rest of the world? Do we look like the world? Do we smell like the world? Do we talk like the world? Uh, do we do anything different where people would know that we're we're a believer in Jesus Christ? So I just want to ask you again, uh, what has it cost you to serve the Lord? I mean, tell me if, if you've done something. Have you given up a, put it in the comments. Have, have you done something like uh, you gave, a good, gave up a good paying job so that you could serve the Lord? Or maybe you've done something where you could be at home to, to take your family to church every Sunday. Uh, maybe you, you gave up that job so that you could do that. Uh, is there something that you've done that you uh, really cost you? Uh, you gave up a job to serve the Lord. Maybe you, uh, maybe you gave up some friends. Have you ever done that? You know, I, I had that experience where you give up some, I call them so-called friends now. Uh, but you lose friends so that you could serve the Lord. Uh, are, are you living any different? Are you just still going along with all the dirty jokes? Have you gave up some of your uh, worldly pleasures, things that you like to do uh, to serve the Lord? You know, I, I used to, before I got saved, when I was off on weekends uh, during deer season, I mean, that's what we were going to do. Saturday and Sunday, we were going deer hunting. May stay out in the woods, may not, but we were going to, deer hunt we used to run dogs and and uh, uh, I, I remember one time I had a uh, a friend there hunting with us and he went to church and uh, he was a good guy but I, I didn't know nothing about church and uh, we were getting ready to get our 
figuring out what we were going to do for the next morning, where we were going to put the dogs out, where we are going to put our standards out. If you ever ran dogs, you know, we, we just basically lined up some dirt roads out in the woods and wait for them to come across. And uh, But anyway, Larry made this comment. He said, uh, well, I, I, I won't be here tomorrow. So, you know, don't 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 put him down for standing. What do you mean I'm here tomorrow? Well, I'm going to church. I said, man, dog season don't last very long. You're going to go to church tomorrow and when you just go sit over there with all them old women. You can be out here with us. And, and he didn't say a whole lot. And I didn't realize what I was saying then. You know, the devil was using me. And, but the Lord was using him. I never forgot that. That's been many, many years ago. And I've, I, I think about it from time to time. Larry, in his own quiet way, he stood for what he believed in. And he said, I won't be here. It cost him to serve the Lord. Number one, he wasn't going to get to go deer hunt with us. And that's something he really liked to do. Number two, he had to stand up to a loudmouth jerk like me making fun of him because he was going to go to church with his wife and, and mother-in-law and all that stuff. And, and, and I made fun of him. And I, I did. I made fun of him. It cost him to serve the Lord. And uh, so what is it costing you to serve the Lord? Are you giving up some of your worldly pleasures, things that you like to do? I mean, it's, it's a constant thing with the sports. We're crazy about sports, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with sports. But when sports take over and we're more involved in sports and we're our church and we're going we're gonna to make our vacation time and our days off so that we can be sure and be there for the ball game or whatever it is, and, but we don't do that for the Lord. Is it costing you anything to serve the Lord? I'm telling you, it's amen or me. I mean, we will do those things. We will plan to get our days off and be, man, we've got a big ball game. We've got uh, whatever, whatever sport that we want to do. And we won't do that to serve the Lord. And that's why we have such a disconnect with our young people. They don't have any clue sometimes about what it really means to serve the Lord because we put God last in most everything. So what is it costing you? I, I just want to, to ask you just, what has it cost you to be a living sacrifice to the Lord? Only you can answer that. And, and if you've done something, I praise God for it. Put it in the comments. Tell us some, some personal story. Testify to how God's blessed you. I know I've, I've done things different in my life than what I was doing uh, as a lost man. And even as a becoming a Christian, I, I've done things different. Why? People say, well, you're the preacher. No, I love the Lord. That's why I started doing it. I was doing some of the things I'm doing now and changing my, my ways and, and my schedule because I love the Lord, not because I was a preacher. I wasn't a preacher. I just wanted to go to church. I wanted to praise the Lord. I wanted to serve Him. So I just, want to, I just want to ask you again. I just want you to think about what is it costing you to serve the Lord? Just what has it cost you to serve the Lord? And be that driver that's not for sale. Be that driver that's not worried about what the world does. You're going to serve the Lord no matter what. Amen. And I want to encourage you to do that. And and I'm just going to leave you that with that with that thought for today. I want you to think about what is it costing you to serve the Lord? Because if you're going to serve the Lord, if you're going to be a living sacrifice to the Lord, it's going to cost you. And I believe in the future. The very near future is going to really cost us to serve the Lord, to say that we're believers, to say that we're a child of God. When things are, these lines are drawn, and they will be drawn in these last days. And I think it'd be best if we make up our mind now. It'd be best if we teach our children now until that happens. Because I know I've had conversations with people, and they say, well, I don't believe the Lord's going to allow those things to happen to his people. There's people all over the world that are Christians that believe in God. They trust him. They follow him. And they're, they went to bed hungry last night. They're believers in Jesus Christ, and they've had their heads cut off. They're believers in Jesus Christ, and they've had all kinds of persecutions and things happen. We here in America have had it made, folks. We've had it made. But if God lifts his hand of protection, he removes that protection from us, what are we going to do? We're going to be like Job, and we're still going to serve the Lord? Naked came I, naked I go. It all belongs to him. Amen? Or we're going to have that attitude. What does it cost you to serve the Lord? Are you willing to pay the price to serve the Lord? It's worth it, amen? It's worth it. And I want to be one of those that finish well. I want to be one of those that finish well and I serve the Lord to the very end. And having done all that I know to do, I'm going to stand serving the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I will pray that's your prayer today, driver. And I want to pray for you one more time before we go. And I want to ask you to pray the pray that in your heart that you want to serve the Lord. Let God lead you, guide you, show you how you can be used these last days. I mention this often. I just want to tell you, if you're you're a driver out there, you can serve the Lord as a missionary driver with us and, and help us to reach more drivers. Man, I would love to have Man, just think if we had 10,000 missionary drivers out there. You know, there's there's a lot of truck drivers in the world. They say there's about 5 million truck drivers in America. That's a lot of truck drivers, amen? And most of them, I would say, need Jesus. We all need Jesus, amen? Most of them probably don't know Jesus. How about we do something proactive? Be a missionary driver. Maybe you can be a chaplain with us. But it's not that you can't serve the Lord doing what you're doing. Uh, as a Christian, but we can work together for the glory of God and serve the Lord and be a missionary driver. Go to our website, check it out, read our statement of faith. You agree with that? Fill out that application, send it in. Amen. We need missionary drivers. We're about at this time about 9,500 short. Amen. We need missionary drivers and you can serve the Lord in that capacity. Let's work together for the glory of God. Let's be willing to pay the cost that we might bring him honor and glory in all that we do. For he is worthy, amen? He is worthy to be praised, and he's worthy to be served. He is the Lord of the host, and he's coming back. He's the Lord of the harvest. He's coming back. He's King of kings. He's Lord of lords. And let's not forget it, driver. Let's serve him, amen? Amen. Love you guys. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer, and I'm going to let you all go and uh, get back to trucking for Jesus, amen? Heavenly Father, I do thank you again, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, and I thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, I pray that you would just uh, really let us have a, a, a heartfelt revival, Lord. Let us search our hearts, and we ask you, Lord, that you search our hearts and be, as David said, Lord, in Psalms 51, Lord, that we would we would be willing to give it all to you, Lord, repent of our ways, create us in a, in a clean heart, create us in a, a heart, Lord, that would be willing to serve you, Lord, pay the price that we might bring you honor and glory in all that we do. And Lord, for just one person there that does not know that forgiveness of sin, they don't know what it's like. Or to have the slate wiped clean. Lord, to have a second chance. I pray, God, that you would draw them to you today, Lord. Save their soul, change their life for all eternity. Of course, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Remember, driver, we are trucking for Jesus. Amen. You want to talk to somebody right now, call that prayer line, 1-800-248-8662. And uh, there's a chaplain waiting to talk with you, pray with you. And uh, y'all subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I don't know how long that's going to be going on. I'll tell you, this social media stuff may be coming to an end for us. But uh, let's, let's just serve the Lord. And let's be sure. And no, tell the world, tell the devil, amen, we are not for sale. We're going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ while we're trucking for Jesus. Keep that shiny side up and that rubber side down. Hammer down every time you get the chance. I'll see you all again out there soon, I hope. Amen. Have a blessed day. Love you guys. Be safe.